It's important to learn about the divine dichotomy and understand it thoroughly if we are to live in our universe with grace. Divine dichotomy holds that it is possible for two apparently contradictory truths to exist simultaneously in the same place. Now on your planet, people find this difficult to accept. They like to have order and anything that does not fit into their picture is automatically rejected. For this reason, when two realities begin to assert themselves and they seem to contradict one another, the immediate assumption is that one of them must be wrong, false, or untrue. It takes a great deal of maturity to see and accept that in fact they might both be true. Yet in the realm of the absolute as opposed to the realm of the relative in which you live, it is very clear that one truth, which is all there is, sometimes produces an effect which, viewed in relative terms, looks like a contradiction. This is called a divine dichotomy, and it is a very real part of the human experience. And as I've said, it's virtually impossible to live gracefully without accepting this. One is always grumbling, angry, thrashing about, vainly seeking justice or earnestly trying to reconcile opposing forces which were never meant to be reconciled, but which by the very nature of the tension between them produce exactly the desired effect. The realm of the relative is, in fact, held together by such tensions. As an example, the tension between good and evil in ultimate reality, there's no such thing as good and evil. In the realm of the absolute, all there is is love. Yet in the realm of the relative, you have created the experience of what you call evil. And you have done it for a very sound reason. You wanted to experience love, not just know that love is all there is. And you cannot experience something when there is nothing else but that. And so you created, in your reality, a polarity of good and evil, thus using one so that you might experience the other. And here we have a divine dichotomy, two seemingly contradictory truths existing simultaneously in the same space. Specifically, there is a, such a thing as good and evil, and all there is is love. The greatest divine dichotomy is that there is only one being, and hence only one soul. And there are many souls in that one being. Here's how the dichotomy works. There is no separation between souls. The soul is the energy of life, that which exists within us and around us as the aura of all physical objects. In a sense, it is that which is holding all physical objects in place. The soul of God holds in the universe. The soul of man holds in each individual body. The body is not a container for the soul, but the soul is a container for the body. Yet there is no dividing line between souls. There is no place where one soul ends and another begins. And so, it is really one soul holding all bodies. All of life is a vibration. That which you call life is pure energy. That energy is vibrating constantly. Always it is moving in waves. The waves vibrate at different speeds, producing different degrees of density or light. This, in turn, produces what you would call different effects in the physical world, actually different objects. Yet while the objects are different and discrete, the energy which produces them is exactly the same. Now you've said that there was no specific place between those two physical locations where the air of the living room stopped and the air of the dining room began, and that is true. Yet there is a place where the air of the living room becomes less dense. That is, it dissipates, it becomes thinner. So too, the air of the dining room, the further from the dining room you go, the less you smell dinner. Now the air in the house is all the same air. 
There is no separate air in the dining room, yet the air in the dining room sure seems like other air. For one thing, it smells differently. So because the air has taken on different characteristics, it seems as though it is different air. But it is not. It is all the same air, seemingly different. In the living room, you smell the fireplace. In the dining room, you smell dinner. You might even go into one room and say, whoa, it's stuffy. Let's get some air in here. As if there was no air at all. And yet, of course, there's plenty of air. What you are wanting to do is change its characteristics. So you bring in some air from outside, yet that is the same air too. There is only one air moving in and around and through everything. So like the air in your house, the energy of life, what we'll call the soul of God, takes on different characteristics as it surrounds different physical objects. Indeed, that energy coalesces in a particular way to form those objects. As particles of energy join together to form physical matter, they become very concentrated, mashed up, and pushed together. They begin to look and even feel like distinct units. That is, they begin to seem separate, different from all the other energy. Yet this is all the same energy, behaving differently. It is the very act of behaving differently which makes it possible for that which is all to manifest that which is many. The clumps of energy which coalesced into discrete units that held in physical beings are what you have chosen to call souls. The parts of me that have become the lot of you are what we are talking about here. Thus, the divine dichotomy. There is only one of us there are many of us. Nothing matters in and of itself. That is, nothing can become matter by itself. Jesus said, without the Father, I am nothing. And the Father of all is pure thought. This is the energy of life. This is what you have chosen to call absolute love. This is the God and the Goddess the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. It is the all in all, the unmoved mover, the prime source. It is that which you have sought to understand from the beginning of time, the great mystery, the endless enigma, the eternal truth. There is only one of us. And so it is that which you are, my dearest being, I have always been in your heart. I am only glad you can now actually feel me there. I have always been with you. I have never left you. I am you and you are me. And we shall never be separated ever because that is not possible. So be the source of the love which I am in the lives of all others. For that which you give to others, you give to yourself, because there is only one of us. This is the great secret. This is the sacred wisdom. So do unto others as you would have it done unto you. All of your problems, all of your conflicts, all of your difficulties in creating a life of peace and joy are based in your failure to understand this simple instruction and to follow it. 